possibly the first receiver taken off the board in the NFL draft or falling all the way down to the late first or into the early second round is going to be Drake London, the wide out from USC. The 6'5", 230 pound receiver is ready for the NFL game and we are going to break down his film from his college seasons and go over his strengths and his weaknesses. But being 6'5", and elite as he has been, there aren't that many players you can compare him to at the NFL level. But as you've already seen from the thumbnail, I think he is the next Mike Evans. And depending where he's taken in the draft could be the wide receiver steal of this entire draft. We're going to unpack all of that and a lot more. So let's get into Drake London's 2022 NFL draft profile. And the first group of plays we're going to look at is his ability to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. The first thing to note is in the 2021 season, he had the highest percentage of contested catches out of any wide receiver in college. He's not going to be this huge route technician where he's going to get a ton of separation at the top of his routes. He's going to get most of his separation with the ball in the air, very similarly to a Mike Evans. And this is why he's not going to fit into every single system. And so that's why teams might have him a lot higher on their draft boards than others. So he could be the top receiver receiver taken but he could go all the way to the second round but like if there's one person guarding him just throw it up same with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams but for different reasons if Aaron Rodgers sees Devontae one-on-one -on -one coverage he knows he's going to get separation with his route running right off the bat but this is why I think Drake London is going to be really good with a gunslinger who is willing to throw it up when there's one person on him because it makes it such an easy read this is what we saw all year long with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase we saw this with Justin Herbert and Mike Williams, Jameis Winston with Mike Evans when they were in Tampa and Stafford when he had Calvin Johnson Megatron. If there's not safety help over the top, give him a chance because more than likely he's going to go up and get it. But he does have a full route tree and this is why I think he's an even better prospect than DK Metcalf because he does have a lot better short and intermediate routes and he also does run a 4-4-6-40 so he can really open it up and keep up with the best corners. They're not going to be able to keep up with him as, or he's going to be least be the same speed but he's not super twitchy but he can catch it and break tackles he's also with his size very hard to jam and so most of the time he's going to get a very good release and you're really going to have to get a quarterback that can trust this because he's going to look covered most of the times like you see a lot on these plays here but when there's a corner lined up against him there isn't going to be that many times when he doesn't have a four five six inch advantage on them and even sauce gardner who's six three who i just covered in yesterday's video drake london is going to have a 30 pound advantage and a huge strength advantage where he can just go up and get it where he can just box him out with one side of his body and with a good place ball use his catcher mitts that he has his hands to go in and bring it down this is why he reminds me so much of mike evans and we see highlight after highlight but not only are these highlights but he has the highest contested catch percentage so they're doing this on a game to game basis and that's why in the 2021 season even though he had a season under injury he fractured his ankle versus arizona he had a 135 yards per game, 11 catches per game, and in three seasons never had less than a 71% catch rate. And why this is so important and why this can be so valuable and why Mike Evans has been so good in the NFL is his ability in the red zone because we see the evol evolution of analytics and how important it is to score touchdowns rather than get field goals. And when you have an absolute weapon like this that can make catches like that in the red zone, this opens up so much because if you're going to leave them one on one in the red zone, they're just going to throw it up. They might even throw it up three times in a row because they're going to like their chances because more than likely it's not going to be a pick, but to be a short handed as he is this is why Mike Evans has so many double digit touchdown receiving years and this is why it's going to be crucial because this opens up your red zone running game as well because if you are going to put two people on him or put a safety over the top or double team him in the red zone this is going to give you numbers in the box and this is why I think he could be huge for a team in the NFL in the first round but he is far from a one trick pony and even though he isn't the quickest or shiftiest guy and he has but he has really good open field speed he uses his image to his advantage on a play like this where the corner does not want him to get an outside free release because he's just going to be able to go up over the top and get it on him so he's really going to try and protect his outside leverage but Drake London is going to use his image to his advantage and get a free inside release this is what Mike Evans does all the time just all get the corner to open up read his hips and then come right in 
inside of him. And he does this over and over. He routinely does this. This is huge on third downs because the corner really has to be careful because if they're not, and this is why most receivers, you're really going to want to protect your inside leverage because you're at a disadvantage in the middle of the field. But with Drake London, you're really he knows he wants to get to the sideline. You know he wants to get vertical. So using his image against the corner to get inside releases when he doesn't have all the shiftiness in the world is something that I loved when watching his film. And he uses his size in more ways than one, too. He's in a situation like a tight end where he's going to be too fast for linebackers, too fast for safeties, but just too big to corners. So what USD did a lot is get him the ball in open space, accounting him for to make a tackle or miss or break a tackle. And on a play like this where you get the ball three, four, five yards in the backfield, he's just going to be too big and strong for a lot of these DBs out there and still pick up positive yards. So he has the speed, he has the awareness, and he has enough wiggle in him to make people miss or break through arm tackles from much smaller corners so again this is what Mike Evans does a lot this is what Calvin Johnson did a lot using their image to get inside releases win almost every single jump ball and get the ball in the open field and break tacklers from much smaller DBs that are probably running the same speed as his and that, so that's who they're gonna have to put on him and another thing that really stuck out to me on his film and something that Mike Evans, but especially a guy like Julio Jones does such a good job. Guys that are true X receivers, you need to be good on the sidelines. I don't know how many times I've seen great catches on the sidelines where they do everything right. They concentrate, they get the ball in, but their feet are out of bounds. Drake London does an excellent job not getting one, but almost every single time in college getting two feet in bounds. He is always spatially aware of where he's at. And if you're going to make a living playing the boundary, this is a huge huge asset to have and is one of the most impressive things I saw on his film. Guys like Julio Jones, uh, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans does a great job on this and this is why I think he is going to be so good at the next level and because he runs so many out routes and because he's usually going to be the isolated receiver or at least the widest receiver, he does a great job working the boundary. And the last thing we're going to look at, and just watching this play, I'm going to show this play a few separate times, but this makes me so happy as a former quarterback, just wishing I had a receiver like this that can make you right. His catch radius is so massive. This is a complete overthrow, but being 6'5", having the vertical, the athletic ability, and the ability to have such a good high percentage contested catch radius, bringing down balls like these, even when the quarterback is wrong in situations, a receiver like Drake London can just make them right. I could watch this play over and over because this is so beautiful. No quarterback is going to be perfect, but when the receiver can make you right on a play like this, you want this guy on your team. And we know this type of play style can be consistent because Mike Evans is the only receiver to have eight straight 1,000 yard seasons. He's had four double digit touchdown seasons and he's averaged around 14 to 17 yards per catch over the span of his career. And it worked out so well because they drafted Jameis Winston the year after Mike Evans to pair them up. And so I'd really like to see him go to the right situation. And where I'm thinking is maybe the Browns with Baker Mayfield who will definitely throw it up. They need someone who can win one-on-one -on -one matchups to replace Odell Beckham Jr. Either one of the Ohio State guys for route running, maybe, maybe Traylon Burks for him. But you see the mock drafts, some of the mock drafts have him going to the Packers at 28. Pairing him with Devontae Adams would be nuts and be a big reason Aaron stays if they draft a skilled position player for the first time since 2002. And if you have a guy like Devontae and Drake London, you can put them on opposite sides, cannot leave neither one of them one on one for different reasons. Put them on the same side, and you have a nightmare to deal with defensively and not only at but Aaron Rodgers will find anyone who's open and so this is why I think depending where he goes I really think he could go to the right situation and that's why people have him go into the Giants but I really don't see that because Daniel Jones just doesn't seem like that type of quarterback people I mentioned or earlier like Joe Burrow Justin Herbert uh, Matthew Stafford really actual gunslingers that will throw it up even when the receiver looks dead covered because that's where we saw Kenny Galladay not really thrive because that's something he's very good at as well but Daniel Jones never utilized him because he didn't look open, especially in the red zone. And so that's why I think depending where he goes, he could be the steal receiver from the 2022 NFL draft. Obviously, we have to look at injury history for a small concern. And also when I was watching his games, his almost willingness to be a part of the run blocking game wasn't all that impressive. Impressive. It didn't seem like he wanted it all that much all the time, even though he has absolutely the ability and strength to go and do that and be highly effective in the run blocking game. So 
that is where I see some of the weaknesses coming at. But overall, I think Drake London is an excellent highlight reel. And I think he's going to go great and be an immediate impact at the NFL level. But let me know what you guys think. Where do you think Drake London should go? What do you think about him? How, do you, how much of an impact do you think he's going to have in his rookie year at the NFL? And which team would you like to see him go to? Make sure to like this video. If you like videos like these, make sure to comment down below what you think about Drake London and who you want me to cover next. And make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.